Hello, Jim Hodges here, Freddie here. Freddie is a schnoodle puppy, standard schnauzer uh, poodle variety that has come in for our residency program. He has done really well. He's a really smart guy. Primarily, our owners just want to have control. Uh, they want to stop and make sure uh, at this age, set when we get to seven, eight months, six months, dogs shouldn't be nipping and chewing and jumping on people wanting to make sure they know what to do to correctly fix it. Yeah, there are a lot of behavioral things, but I believe it sets us up for life to do obedience training. Obedience training can be fun. It can be fun for you, it can be fun for the dogs, and I guarantee you it's gonna allow their, your dog to be able to do more things as you get older together, good puppy, as uh, you desire. So I believe obedience, when we have a well-behaved dog, they're gonna get a whole new outlook on life. They're gonna travel, they're gonna do things. They're gonna go to department stores like Home Depot and things like that. I think it's a positive. The big thing is, is we always wanna let our puppy or dog know when they're doing something right. So he was not in a command right then. He come around, wanted to be loved. I wanna love him. He's a real sweet, affectionate guy, okay? We wanna love him. That's important. Anytime he's doing something that pleases us, we praise, okay? If he does something we don't like, we're going to bite it. And when we praise, it's words, touch, treat, toy. When we bite it, it's words, touch. And sometimes we might uh, uh, separate him from us, give him a time out, make him stay in a place. But primarily, it's words and touch. I tell all my clients that have puppies that they learn no at a very young age. Then they learn to ignore no right after that. That's why we put the touch with it. The touch is not to intimidate, dominate, break his spirit, or hurt him. It's just to help let him know that we're the leader, we're in control. One other thing about Freddie, Freddie likes to lean. You know, sometimes that can be a dominant thing, sometimes not, sometimes it's just a love, wanting to be there. Our owners love the, the leaning. Guess what? I'm gonna love it too. because. The beautiful thing about training is, as long as you're the leader, you can allow things like that to occur. You can allow getting on furniture. You can allow a number of things because you call the shots. You determine when they happen and when they don't happen. The only other big thing about this guy is he was liking to jump a little bit, but primarily nipping and chewing. And obedience really helps with that. Why? Because when we teach him obedience and we tell him no, we're telling him good boy, when he goes to buy, we're gonna consequence too. And before long, real quickly, he's gonna learn not to bite and chew when we bite him and tell him no, as long as we're consistent with it, okay? And that is on leash, that is off leash. So we're gonna go through the obedience commands. You're gonna see what's going on. Know that no means a lot of things. It means no when we're jumping. It means no when we're biting or chewing on things. It means doing it all, praise and consequence, or motivation, which is the combination of the two, in the moment right now. It's black and white, on and off. You ready, buddy? Okay, let's go. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Good boy. So he sometimes isn't the fastest to work, so you're going to hear me try to uh, motivate him. All right, man. Come on. Let's go. You got it. Good boy. So let's go with our walking command. If he pulls us, we're going to tap the leash right back to our side. There's the consequence. Did it affect him? No. But we're going to bite him. And when he does it, we're going to bite in the moment. That's the problem a lot of clients have. It'll be no, then let's go, then good boy. Not as much as if he did it right the first time. And you go on, okay? Now, there is a caveat to this. Because he will lag behind a little bit, I don't want to bite him up to begin with. I don't know if you heard me or if you go back. Let's go. You're going to hear me try to motivate you. Okay, buddy, come on. Let's go. Out of boy. And as soon as he starts to do what I want, I'm going to praise him. So I'm motivating him to come up. Now, what would happen if he decided he didn't want to come up and he started putting on the brakes? Guess what? Then I would tap him up through my side. But when he's lagging behind, I'm just going to try to motivate him to do what we need to do. Okay? So sit. Good boy. Sit means sit. I don't like to keep him in a sit for a long time. I'm not going to allow him to smell the ground. He didn't. He looked down, but he came right back up. If he did not sit then, 
I would have tapped the leash and I would have gone, no, sit, okay? If he got up, and then I would come right back and praise, shame on me, uh, but if he started to pop up, it would be, no, sit, all right? And then good boy again. If he does something once, he's going to do it again and again. So if this is a guy that would pop up out of your sit, be ready for him to pop up because he's going to do it again, okay? Hand signal for sit is like this. Break. My famous break command, when I break a dog, I step back and give him a target because I'm trying to teach him to want to come to me and to be with me. I may use a treat. Uh, this guy's not 100% treat motivated. Now, he'll take treats. I got a treat in my pocket, but that doesn't define him. He's going to try to do what he wants to do with his partner. So that's why praise is so important in that touch, okay? Now, sit. Hand signal for sit. Good boy. I give him a treat. I pet him, love him. And he took it there. But you see, right, that was not a ravenous, I want that treat. He just took it. I think he was taking it to be more polite than anything. Good boy. So now I will use a treat for the recall command. Okay? So what will happen is, come. I'll come. I'll take a step. He sits. He looks at me. a boy. I don't just give him the treat. I have him stop and sit and look at me. So now if he didn't come to me and we were on leash, I would have tapped the leash to me. I would go, no, come. If he's off leash, break. We would do our best to get his attention. When he's running around the yard or in the house, we always do it in the house to begin with, get his attention, and we would go, I got another treat. Okay. We go, Fred, hey, hey. So you see, it doesn't motivate him. But when he started coming and committing to me, I would have told him to come. Break. Hard to believe he's a puppy, is it? He's so well-mannered and deliberate in what he does. So that's why we have to use that emotion. Let's go. Sit. Down. Hand signal for down from the side. Okay, he has to stay down. If he didn't go down or if he popped up, it would be no, down, and then we would come back and, and pet again. Sit. Good boy. So down from in front, down. Same thing. Side here, front here. Good boy, come. Good. Good boy. Let's go. Next command. Okay, buddy. Come on. Bed. Bed command for him. Good boy. He gets on the bed. He can lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what, as long as he stands there. I am not going to tell him to S-I-T or D-O-W-E-N or S-T-A-Y here. I just told him, bed, that's his command, and he has to hold it. He will hold it, but he's going to test you. He's going to test you if there's a nook or cranny around you. No. So you see, what did I do? That I tapped him right back to the center of the bed. Okay? Normally, that's not a test, but if there is some little cubby hole he wants to get in, He's going to try to do it. His, his mom and dad says he likes the little cubby holes at home. It's a, maybe a nesting or a den thing for him. But uh, we're not going to allow him to break the command. If he does it, we're going to tap him right back. No, bad, good boy. And he can handle it. Good boy. And again, he can do this for a long period of time. Now, why am I hesitating here? It's because he did want to step off. Right. When our dog makes a mistake, or we make a mistake, we come back and we repeat that command a couple of times right. Out a boy. My praise came when all four feet hit the ground. Then I'm going to step back off. That a good boy. Yes. I can talk to you all day long, but he has to hold that command, okay? The hand signal for the bed is pointing to the bed. Right. Good boy. Let's go. So I said we like to come back and do it right a couple of times in a row. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That a boy. Good boy. So you saw the motivation again. One more time. Bam. That a boy. Good boy. Pat, love. Step away. Go about doing what you do. Everything we do in the beginning is on a loose leash. When it's tight, we're doing the work for him. When it's loose, he's having to make that decision. As he starts to obey on a loose leash, we can start to move off leash. 
or we move to the little tab. That's a little miniature leash that I like to give my clients. And we do it inside to begin with, okay? Just know whenever our dog makes a mistake or, or even if he does something right, he is already programmed or conditioned to do that thing over and over. If it's something we like, we praise him. We put a new word to it, he may have a new trick or a command. If it's something we don't like, we have to bite it. We bite it in the moment. Motivation is praise and consequence. And praise and consequence in the beginning is in the moment. When he obeys, praise. When he does it, bite. Remember, the bite is not designed to intimidate, dominate, break a spirit, or hurt it. Okay, buddy, let's go. Sit. Good job, Freddie. The next command is the heel command. The heel command is when he's in our little rectangular box. Beside, you see how he likes to lean a little bit? Good boy. And I don't believe that's controlling. That's love. Maybe assurance, reassurance, but he's right there. The heel command is we have a rectangular box beside us. It's our job when we start moving, we tell him to heal. His job, it's our job to keep him in that box. It's his job to try to stay in that box. He can't read our movements, so we have to give him time to catch up or move back. Heel. Hand signal for heel. I'll turn. Good boy. I'm going to let him know when he's doing what I want. He sits automatically, and he holds that sit. Good boy. Heel. Good boy. A little slow there. So now, with that being a little slow, uh, that could have even been me. You notice I took three steps and stopped. But we realized it was slow. As long as it was a one-time or one-off thing, that's okay. But we're going to come back. Heel. Good. Heel. Turn. Good boy. Notice the loose leash. We don't want to be controlling it. Good boy. We step off. Good boy. All right, and here we go. All right, load up. Atta boy. To be able to load up in a vehicle, get on a piece of furniture, what have you. Break it. His owners would like for him to be able to lay on the bed and there's nothing wrong with that. What I like to tell my clients is the command should be yours. You shouldn't just allow him arbitrarily to get on the bed, at least for a long time. And uh, when he does get on the bed, it's good boy. And then when it's time to get off, you can actually tell him off or break again, okay? But if he doesn't get off, it would be a no and you tap him off. I apologize for that, the camera cut off, but uh, if Freddie or your dog doesn't get off the bed, it becomes no, off, or no, tap, let's go, whatever it may be. The final thing with Freddie is the stay command. Every dog has a stay command, but it's not part of daily working when we're in the middle of obedience. I don't use a sit stay, I use a down stay, and I use a normal stay. And the hand signal would be down, stay, just like that. And when I tell him to stay, that means pack his bags, he's going to be there a while. I will do a down stay with a dog, primarily to teach them that I'm the leader. It also becomes the beginning of being able to use that open palm stay to keep him in another room if you want. And if he's in another room and you were walking out returning, or even if you weren't, you would walk out that door and you would tell him to stay. If he walked through the door, again, you have something with a little leash or the little tab. Eventually, you won't need that, and you would just pick it up, walk him back into the room. No, no, no. Stay, and immediately walk back out again. Freddy's a good boy. He's a really good boy, and he's a puppy. If you continue to do these things, a minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes a day, loose leash, very positive, but make him do something when he doesn't do it, you're gonna have a fantastic life together. He's just that kind of guy. Sweet, good looking, and he's gonna be a wonderful companion. I thank you so much. If you need me, you know, all you have to do is pick up the phone, 336-945-3232. JimHodgesDogTraining.com on my website, Facebook, Jim Hodges Dog Training as well. Thank you so much. Take care and God bless.